G'day, I'm Yuki Sandev and today I will show you how to take a basic cube with multiple materials from Blender into Unity. Alright, so this is part two of the basic Blender to Unity series. In this part, we're going to be using Blender a little more and covering breaking the cube up into smaller pieces and then splitting some of those original materials into a second material, i.e. creating a cube with multiple layers. Uh, these multiple layers can then individually hold their own textures. Uh, then after that, we'll import the cube into Unity and play with those layers. If you haven't completed part one of the series, I would suggest you do, and the link is at the top of the screen now. If you are continuing the series, then welcome back, and if you're new, then g'day. So to start off with, if you haven't done part one or you've deleted your wrap, then I'll do a quick rundown of creating the wrap in this video. You can, of course, pause at any time to catch up or skip to the next chapter. Also, the uh, texture that I'm going to use for this video is a Minecraft texture. It's a very low res 16 by 16 diamond block texture. If you would like to use the texture that I'm using, you can get it from the link in my description to GitHub and it will be there. Otherwise, you can basically grab any block texture you like um, and follow along. So let's get started. All right. So as I mentioned before, if you have uh, done part one and you deleted the wrap already or you're new to this and you need to create the wrap, then I'm going to give you a super quick rundown of it. So you can either watch this and just pause it when you need to, or you can go back and uh, complete part one. So we're going to start by opening Blender, hit General, you've got a cube, UV editing, and then we're going to export the UV layout and put it somewhere where you can find it. Size is going to be 64 by 64. Export, that's all we need Blender for. Back in here, and we're going to edit this cube PNG. That's him. And then we're going to drag a diamond texture into here. This diamond texture here is available on GitHub if you need it. And we'll just put this on all the faces, making sure you're not overlapping. And there we go, and then export PNG, and we'll call it diamond ticks. Yeah, that'll do. And we don't need that anymore. Okay, so if you're in a position now where you've got this wrap here, then we're ready to go to into Blender and start creating uh, multiple layers. All right, so we're gonna fire up Blender. And again, we're going to go with the default cube that comes up in your splash screen. If you didn't get a splash screen or you didn't get a cube, uh, you can manually add it up here and just click add mesh cube. The only thing you got to remember is when you add a cube manually like that, it will not add a material automatically for you. So you need to come down here and create one. Just click new and just leave it as default. There's your material. Good to go. Then let's click UV editing just to make sure we do have a wrap sitting there. We do. At this point, we're going to come up here on this UV screen and click image open. And we're going to find the image that we just made, the wrap, this guy. And open. And you'll find that the image gets smaller because it's a tiny little thing. Uh, just click anywhere outside the box um, and you'll see it in here. So that's applied. Now you don't see it on the cube yet, so we need to go into shading shading screen up here so we just moved from UV editing to shading hopefully your blender is set up with defaults and it will look similar to this uh, and you've got your node screen down here and make sure this node here is selected and press ctrl T gives you a whole bunch of extra stuff and we just want this guy here which is the image texture drop this little box down and you can see the diamond text PNG that we already imported onto the wrap select that and now it's applied to the cube, change the linear here to closest to sharpen it up. And there it is. So we've got our wrap in here and we've got our cube looking pretty much like a Minecraft cube. 
So the next step is we want to actually split this cube up into smaller pieces so that we can create another layer or more layers. Um, and I was kind of thinking each uh, subdivision could be just each one of these boxes. Doesn't sound like a bad idea. So if we jump into edit mode and uh, let's select all and right click and subdivide. And so the number of cuts we want is 15. So if you actually count these boxes here, you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. But for some reason, if you put 15 in here, it matches perfectly to each of those boxes. I don't know why. There's probably a really good reason for it. If somebody wants to tell me why, that'd be great. It's probably got something to do with these corners here. Um, and it's the same with all the other... Uh, shape like if you had a 64 by 64 then you enter in subdivisions of 63 and I think it does the same it gets it perfectly with each of these boxes so that's what we want so now this cube is actually split up with all these individual faces now so at this point we can come up here so you see these three little little debris here we want to select this guy here and that allows you to select a face so let's hold the shift on your keyboard and select all the blue ones and well anything that's not gray basically so we're going to select all of these guys and let's go with that okay so with those selected come down to your materials uh, and we want to create a new, so the, this is the default material. Everything you see on that cube right now is in material one. So if we add a new one and uh, give it a name, uh, we'll just call it layer two. And then click assign. So what you have selected right now is going to get assigned to layer two. It will no longer be on the first material, it will be on the second. So let's click assign. And you'll see the color disappears because there's no texture assigned to that layer yet. Uh, let's, while we're at it, rename material 01 just for just to make it easier to uh, understand. So if we click, so there's a couple here that I missed. So you can see that one there is blue. So if I click it, it says layer 1 up here. If I click one of the ones that we've already assigned, it says layer 2. So you know which layer you're on by just clicking on the box. So we know that's in the wrong layer and also this guy and this guy. And then you can click layer two and assign. Now it's assigned those three selections that we just made into layer two. So now what you've got to do is go around this entire cube and do the same for all of the pieces that are not gray. Um, so I'm going to do it real quick while you do it and uh, we'll come back when it's done. Okay, I think we might have got them all. Okay, so as you can see, there's basically no color left on the cube. We've put all of those blue boxes and anything that basically wasn't gray into layer two. So if I click any of this gray stuff around here, it should stay on layer one over here. As soon as I click these lighter boxes, it should drop down to layer two because they're on an alternative layer. So at this point, if you were to actually export this FBX and then import it into Unity, it would export it with two materials. So when you import it into Unity, there will be two materials you can extract rather than one. And you already have uh, a double layer. And that's probably all we're going to do for this video. The next video will go a little further and we might uh, do some more kind of fun things with this. So I think at this point, we can just leave it like that and we can bring this into Unity. So to get this into Unity, we're just going to go File, Export, FBX. And uh, just like before, we're just going to do the mesh, nothing else. And uh, give it a name. So we'll call it uh, Multi-Layer Cube. 
Uh, so just yeah, make sure mesh is uh, the only one selected and export FBX and that is going to export the FBX file with the two materials. And that's all we're going to need and I would suggest you probably save this as well, the actual uh, blend file um, because I'm probably going to use this in part three so if you intend to watch part three uh, you'll probably need this file. So just uh, save that and we'll get this into Unity. Alright, so jumping into Unity, we've got the editor open and we're going to get the FBX file that we exported from Blender and drag it straight into your project. Uh, before we do anything else, just click on the uh, cube that you imported and extract the materials and select folder default, just select into assets and that'll just rip those two materials out of here so that you can manipulate them. If you left them in there, you wouldn't be able to do much with them. So as you can see, it's coming with two two materials and the mesh. At this point, um, well, let me just drag this onto the scene so we can see what we're doing. So we can actually change things in here without even putting textures in them. Um, so I could go to the layer one, which is the outer layer. That was the gray, all the gray pieces and uh, let's change it to blue. And then I could say layer two is green. As you can see, I can individually change the color properties of both of those layers. All right, let me just press Control Z a couple of times to get back to how it was. So at this point, let's bring a texture in. Um, let's bring that diamond wrap that we made into the project. And before we can play with this diamond wrap, we need to change a couple of things by default. We need to turn off MIPS, change bilinear to point. Change normal to none and apply. If we don't do that, then these uh, that texture would just look fuzzy on the layers. So let's click layer one and add the texture to it. Bump. So as you can see, it's only added the texture to layer one. It's ignored everything on layer two. So if we look at the texture, as you can see here, just zoom in on this guy. So as you can see, the, the entire texture actually has the diamond blue bits and it has the gray bits, but it's only applied the gray bits because the blue is on layer two. So if I get that same texture now and apply it to layer two, so I click on layer two and get that same texture and drop it up there, you now have the blue bits. Now that we've got the textures on there, you can still uh, play with these layers. The textures are just textures. I mean, you can, what do we got here? We got uh, emission. Okay, let's just go with emission. So let's go with uh, layer two, which is the diamond bits and do emission. And let's make it, I don't know, purple or something. So, so you've still got the texture in there. You can see there's different shades of purple in there. It's not all just one color. Um, and you just, I don't know, play with it to get it right. However you like it. And there you go. Uh, there's lots of things you can do in Unity with this. I'm not going to go into detail about it. That would just be a whole video series. Um, but once you get down to it, you wouldn't probably be using Unity to do too much in here apart from emissions and colors and tints. Um, and the rest of it you would be doing in Blender. And that's what the third uh, installment of the series is going to be. It's going to be playing with these textures in Blender. And then because the changes you're making are a little bit more extravagant, you have to bake the textures. And that's what we're going to be covering in the third part of this is baking. Um, I think that's pretty much all there is for this video. Um, I'll leave you to play with these things and the different bits and pieces you can do with these layers. Uh, I haven't really gone down here and had a look at what you can do with it. I'm sure there's a lot you can do with it. Um, you can, of course, change you know roughness. Oh, I didn't realize you could do that. Smoothness, yeah. Anyway. I'll leave that to you uh, to have a play with and then stay tuned for part three, which will be doing a little more interesting things with this cube in Blender. Um, I've got a feeling we're going to do something like extrude some of these faces and make it look a bit more interesting. Um, and if we do that, then yes, we definitely have to bake those textures to get them to come back and look normal in here. Otherwise, they would just look really weird and have a lot of noise. So we'll cover that in the third video. Uh, so thanks for watching and we will see you next time.